identify yourself and where you're from. And you can okay. just give first the okay. press an opportunity to Yeah, where it really is a press thing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Peter from KBMP. Uh, Senator, the 158 people from Nong Kai, um, do you hear anything if the Laotian government will allow them to? We brought that up with the, uh, both with the deputy foreign minister and with the foreign minister. I wasn't terribly satisfied with the answers. We made it clear that, that those people, um, you know, they're persons of interest which uh, the UN High Commission on Refugees have uh, determined that, that they are legitimate political refugees uh, who uh, uh, are entitled to go to the uh, third countries that uh, they're assigned to. There are about 70 to the US. Um, there were others to Australia, some to the Netherlands, I believe. Um, we did get some information I'm not actually at liberty to um, discuss with you about some of them. And, um, and others, we, we brought up um, the, the status. And again, this is where the, the carrots hopefully come into play, but they're going to have to. These, they're not signatories to the uh, international agreements that provide these rights to these folks. So there's a, that, that provides a complication. Folks, we have time for a couple more questions, and the senator's got another event he's got to go to. So feel free to ask back here. And please identify yourself. Hi, Senator Franken. I'm Melissa with Mo Pages. And um, on June, July 18th, my editor, um, Bill and Gilby, they actually um, made the five-hour car trip from the capital of Laos to um, the village. And there's actually two gates, and at the first gate they got in, but, but at the second gate they were denied entry. Did you get a chance to look around the gate to see the conditions of that? Well, the first gate may be the old, older village of the 350 folks who were there before who aren't Hmong. I, I, I'm only, that's my, uh, I'm only speculating as to what, I, I didn't, I, I didn't experience this as gates. Sure. <laughs> so I didn't have the, the exact same experience. Uh, there were clearly sort of, you can tell the difference between the old houses and, and the, the houses that are there for the Hmong because the ones that are there for the Hmong are newer. You also have the dirt floor uh, that is the tradition among among households, and the uh, ones that were there before were built up and were on sort of on stilts, a little bit higher and had floors. So, uh, but I did see some of the Hmong homes and saw some of the gardens that they had planted. Remember, they got there in January, so this is July. So this is uh, there was various vegetables, I saw corn, I saw on stuff. And again, this is not in, in the uh, most, it doesn't seem like the most hospitable soil I've seen, but I mean, the areas are incredibly verdant. So, uh, but you know, you want, uh, as you fly over, you see how important rice is. And uh, this, they, doesn't, it doesn't appear to be Kind of, uh, uh, kind of um, soil or condition for rice paddies. So I'm not an agronomist, and I don't know exactly what I was seeing when I flew over. But um, this is going to be a fairly hard scrabble existence for these folks, I think. And I don't know how to compare it to conditions for most uh, Laotians in, in the country and most Hmong in the country. Is there any ind indication of how long these camps were going to be open? I think this is where they're going to be living for a long, long time. Is this right? is not a temporary camp. This is, I mean, when I say these houses are rudimentary, they're, they're, they're built to be homes. I mean, they're not, this is not a 
this is not built to be a refugee camp. This is, they call it a settlement village, and I think they call it that because that's what they consider it. They don't hmm. consider it a refugee camp. But they're not able to go out back and forth, back and forth? I think that they are. Oh, yeah. I think that they are able to go to the provincial capital, uh, but I may be wrong on that. I may be wrong on that. But my sense was that there is a provincial capital that's not that far away, and uh, there is some freedom of movement. My editor did speak with um, some of the families there. Yes. And they do, they can leave the camp, but they need like a working permit. That's that's right. Yeah, that's they a, need a permit that, to enter. That's my and memory. Leave, and there's also a time that they can leave and come back. Right. So I wish that you could have had a more in-depth conversation with them, um, you know, with one of the villagers or a family. But I do too. Like a time. I do too. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Believe me, me I, you know, it's a long trip. Correct. Yeah. And, and uh, I was, uh, that's one of the reasons I was not terribly uh, happy about the uh, constraints uh, on my trip there. Okay. Last question. In the future, plan the unit to uh, back to Laos for another trip? In the future. I have no immediate plans to go back to Laos. I do have plans to keep a wa very strong, watchful eye on this situation, uh, both through the State Department and through the embassy there. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Thank you for your interest in this. Oh, thank really you. Thanks for uh, following up with all your bases.